How many of us know that data from the Copernicus Sentinel-2 satellites can serve as a backbone for glacier monitoring? Sentinel-2's multispectral instrument is designed to measure precise surface reflections of Earth's surface from sunlight with a very stable sampling geometry. Because Copernicus Sentinel-2 is so detailed and precise, a large amount of geometric data, like elevation and displacement information, can also be generated. Such geometric data help researchers to describe the dimensions and specifics of the almost 200,000 glaciers in the world. Changes in a glacier's elevation and their extent can give us a hint about the amount of stored freshwater, now and in the decades to come. Researchers from Utrecht University are utilizing Copernicus Sentinel-2 data in their work related to glacier extent, elevation change, and its effect on ice flow behavior. But just how can modern technology in space be used to monitor high mountain regions? Satellite Earth observation systems are ideal for generating global inventories to monitor change over time. For example, uh, we can see where the snow is present and how fast this is melting away. Or we can look at the terminus where the glacier is meeting an ocean or a lake and how this terminus is changing over time. And Sentinel-2 has a stable sensing geometry and a high resolution and through that it makes it an ideal system to monitor uh, or to, to generate such inventories. And how can the Copernicus Sentinel-2 mission also spark innovation? Well, we do not live on a static Earth and Sentinel-2 is recording like a stop motion. So previously we had systems that were recording maybe twice a month, but now with the two satellites of Sentinel-2 orbiting the Earth, at least sensing every location every five days, we can start to see a lot more dynamics. So instead of annual velocities, changes in glaciers, we can even start to look into the seasonal or monthly or weekly uh, velocity changes as well. And then you start to see a lot more dynamics. With the high resolution Copernicus Sentinel-2 data, we're able to see changes at individual glacier level. And in this way, we can foster research to look at these individual changes and couple that to the geometry or the lithology or the glacier type. But we can also maybe couple it to changes that are occurring with other interacting parts of the glacier. So for example, look at the, the fjord circulation or the effect of ice buttressing. How can such data collection be essential for post-disaster analysis? For many natural hazards like landslides or mountain creep, uh, we can observe signals that occur months, weeks or days before a disaster happens. So since Sentinel-2 has a always on recording mode, we have already these imagery in the archive and can analyze them to watch these precursor motions evolve and through that get a better understanding of the mechanics of such disasters. While on the other hand, we can also use the imagery that have been recorded uh, close to the event while the event is, has happened and can map the extent of this disaster and communicate that to the response teams so they can coordinate this disaster. Satellite data are essential for monitoring our environment worldwide, helping to better understand climate change and natural phenomena that affect our livelihoods. And the Copernicus Sentinels are a game changer in this respect. <laughs>